In this video, I want to show you how you can get month on month change in your data using Power BI. I'm going to show you how to get the actual value as well as the percentage change, as well as the different variations of the month on month, such as day on day or year on year. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So a quick intro on what I mean by month on month. So let's say we are in the current month and in this month he sold an amount totaling over £1,300. Whereas previous month, you sold about a thousand pounds worth of goods. So a month on month would show a 300 pounds increase to your sales versus the previous month or a 30% increase. So this type of change, either the percentage or the actual amount is what we're after when we're using the month on month metric. So now I want to show you how to implement the month on month using an example that I prepared for you today. So here we are, we have a very simple Power BI report that just has one table, the sales table here. So if we go to the data view here, you'll see that we only have a couple of columns that we can work with. So it will have the product sold, which is in the sales table. So the type of products that was sold, how many and what was the price and also when. Uh, we put it in a graph here to show the total sales by year and month. Now to visualize the year month on both the line charts and in the table, we create a relationship between our sales and we use the calendar table to visualize it. And don't focus too much on the calendar table, it's just a standard calendar table that we use uh, as a central time intelligence calendar table for our data model here. If you don't know how to create one, I covered it in a separate video, so check those out if you haven't yet. And lastly, what we have is the total sales measure which is calculating the total sales from the sales table. Now it calculates it by, if we go to the calendar or the sales table here, it calculates the total sales by multiplying the quantity against the unit price. And that is what we are visualizing here on both of these two visuals. If you look at the measures table here, we have the total sales. And as you can see here, we have uh, a sum X, which just does exactly what I said. So it's unit price multiplied by quantity. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll try to fetch the previous month's total sales into the line of the current month that we're looking at. Now the DAX function that we're going to use here is something called the previous month and I covered it in a separate video. But if you're feeling lazy, you can just follow what I do here. So we're going to create a new measure here and we're going to name this one already uh, month on month. equals. Uh, we're going to use a calculate so that we can add that filter function. And in our expression, we're going to just use the total cells that we've created. So this is the one that calculates by multiplying the unit price by quantity. So instead, what we want is we want the uh, total sales for the previous month. So we're going to give it the calendar dates. So if we hit enter, and now we have this measure that's added in our table here, just so that we can visualize how it looks like on a table view. So here we go. So you can see that on, let's say on the February, 2020, we have the month on month 1242.43, which is the total sales for the previous month. So now that's the first step done. So we're able to get the previous month's value by using the previous month function. And this is what we'll need to use to compare against the total sales value. But before we do that, I just want to address one thing. You can see at the bottom here, um, it's created a new value here on the October where there are no total sales there. And that's because there is a total sales for the previous month, which is September, which is why it's showing us October. So we want to make sure that we only show the month on month or we only do the calculations when there is a total sales for the month that we're looking at. So. Um, in that case, we might need to put an if statement to say, okay, if you don't have any total sales for that month, exclude, uh, don't show me any month on month. So to do that, we can go back to our month on month here. I'm going to just wrap this in an if statement. So I'm going to say, so if 
is blank and I will just use the total cells here and I'm gonna say if it's not blank give me the calculate so this is what we're doing so don't get too confused because it seems to be getting a little bit ugly here but all it's doing is if it's checking if the total sales is blank or not blank and if it is not blank then give me the month on month otherwise uh, exclude me so if i hit enter you'll see that that excludes the october from our table here now from here it's pretty simple all we have to do is do the total sales minus the previous which will give us the value change from the previous month to the current month so let's say for example from the february 2020 you can see there is a 57 pounds difference because that is the difference between the previous month sales and the current month sales uh, however one thing I want to do here is I just want to make this a little bit readable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this if statement that gives us the previous sales into a variable. And if you don't know how to use a variable, it's pretty simple. You first just need to declare it and you need to uh, add the, um, the value that you want to add, either a scalar or a tabular. So in this case, we're adding just the value of the previous value and I'm going to wrap it in this variable called previous. Now that we've wrapped it in a variable, we can reuse that as many times as we want in the code. So now that we have created a variable called previous, this will signify the previous month sales. All we need to do is say total sales minus the previous month sales. And you'll see it gives you the exact same uh, results, except that the return value, which is the calculation that we are looking at, is a lot more simpler to read. Now that you know how to get the month on month value, the actual change between the uh, previous month sales and the current month sales, now we want to convert this into a percentage change, um, which will show you how much the sales have changed in a percentage value. Now for this, we need to divide the current um, calculation that we have to the previous value and then multiply that by 100. This is the uh, calculation in order to get the percentage change from one value to another. So what we're going to do uh, at this point is we're going to use divide, which is the safer way to divide um, values together. And what we want to do is we want to wrap this into its own entity. So this will be uh, the numerator and then the denominator would be the previous value. So if we hit that and enter, now we need to multiply it by 100 in order to get the percentage value. But in Power BI, you don't need to do that as long as you change the, uh, the view to be a column, uh, to be a percentage. Now that we've changed that into percentage, have a look at the table. So here we go. So if you look at the table here, now we get the percentage value change month on month for our data. So pretty simple, right? So one interesting thing about our DAX code, you'll notice that we reused the previous sales variable uh, two times in our return. And basically it allowed us to reuse the same calculation without having to rewrite the whole thing, which is one of the reasons why you should be using variables wherever you can. So let's say you're not interested in month on month and you want to use a different variation. So let's say you want to see the year on year change on your data instead. So how do you do that? Well, the good news is that you've already done the hard part. Now to get the different variations like uh, quarter and quarter, day on day, year on year, you can use the same solution and just tweak it slightly to make it work. So let's go back to this uh, DAX code that we've created here. I'm just gonna copy it and we're going to create a new measure. So I'm going to paste it here. And instead of month on month, we're going to name this year on year. And the only thing that you need to change in this code is this part, which um, is instead of previous month, we want to change it to previous year. And voila. So now you have year on year measure uh, created quite easily using the same uh, solution that we've created for month on month. So let's have a look at how that looks like. So I'm going to do, uh, let's say calendar for a year. I'm going to do year on year change. 
and then we're gonna do total sales. If I just change this to a percentage format, you'll see that we've had a 20% decrease from our sales last year compared to this year. So let's try it one last time with the day on day, which again is the same method. So we'll create a new measure once more. Uh, we'll paste the uh, DAX code for month and month here. We'll change it to day on day. And instead of previous month, we'll replace this with previous day. We've hit enter and that's it. So you now have a measure, a day on day measure that you can use to see the difference on a day to day basis. So let's have a look and see how that looks like um, in action. So we're just going to get the dates here. We'll do total sales for those days and we'll do a day on day change. We'll change that into a percentage value. And there you go. So it shows you the day on day change for your total sales on a daily basis. So you'll notice that some of them are blank, but that's because we have some days that are missing here. So for example, you can see that um, we don't have a value on the third. And that's because there is no sales data for the second, which is why it's not being shown there. Um, but any day that has a previous day is where it uh, compares the data from and then checks the uh, difference. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start implementing something like a month on month change calculation in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.